Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the work that you are already doing in people's lives. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. Let all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, let all the praise be given unto you, Jesus. You deserve it, Lord. We humble ourselves, Lord. And we say, let your will be done. 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 I'm only just a vessel, Lord. I'm only just a vessel. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Ufensa Sidwe. I was a taller rather. <laughs> and... I'm just a vessel. Honor and glory belongs to Jesus. I have nothing to do with it. Okay. Can we all turn to John 15 from verse 4 to verse 5? John 15, from verse 4 to 5. It reads in my version, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without, for without me, you can do nothing. This is Jesus saying these words. He's saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. So when I think about spiritual maturity, most of the time, especially in terms of the flesh, we look at maturity in terms of age. We look at when you are younger, you have not matured yet, but when you are older, you have reached a stage where you have matured. But in the kingdom of God, it's very different. It's not about age, it's about the fruits. We need to bear fruits. And in here it says, abide in me. Stay rooted to me. Stay connected to me. For without me, you cannot do anything. You cannot walk in this light. You cannot be a child of God if you don't abide in Jesus. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you make a decision to live the life that you lived before with all that it comes with. And it says you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? You now inherit a new identity in him that is being a child of God. But you do not know what that is unless you abide in him. And so, if you read further, especially in verse 1, I just want to pass through it quickly. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. 
and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. That's where I want to stay for now. It says that he is the true vine and the father is the vine dresser. A vine dresser is someone that takes care of the vine and the fruits. He says he prunes all of them so that they may bear much fruit. What is that? The pruning process is when the vine dresser cuts off unnecessary things that will hinder any that will hinder the branch from bearing fruits that will hinder the growth of the fruits what does that mean for you as a child of god walking into your new identity in christ that means the pruning process is that while you walk in this new identity in christ Bitterness comes off. Anger comes off. Now you begin to bear fruits. What comes? Love, kindness, patience. Immorality is cut off. But you need to be a branch that is willing. You need to be a branch that is willing to allow the Father to cut off those things that will hinder your growth. All of it come off one by one. And he is willing to stay in it with you as long as you abide in him. He will continue to prune you. You will see as you walk, you bear fruits. Patience now becomes a part of your story. Now kindness. Those are not things that you only keep on the inside. But as you bear those fruits, it begins to show on the outside as well. Because when you look at a tree, when it has not bear fruit yet, you cannot identify whether yet that tree is an apple tree or it's a pear tree or what type of fruit it will bear. But once the fruit begins to show, you can identify this is good fruit. And it says that no, no bad tree can bear good fruit. So when you abide in Jesus, Jesus is loving. He's patient. He's kind. And so those who are in him, they are the same. I would like to continue further because even with this pruning process, we have a real enemy who's out for us. He's not going to make it easy for you. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. From verse 10. Ephesians 6. From verse 10. Verse 10 to 13. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the, full, the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh, and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And so, 
a lot of people might say, why, Lord, why do good things, I mean, why do bad things happen to good people? Why were to one treat us? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to go through these trials? I don't understand. But child of God, every soldier needs training in order to win the war. It's part of the training process of maturing. It's part of the process so that you may bear fruits. As much as the enemy might come against you, and it might be an attack against you, you see like everyone is against you, but God is allowing you so that you may build muscle. Allow the process. Allow God to trim you. Instead of saying certain things back, because that was the old you, you will say. But this time he says, abide in me. When they treat you somehow, forgive. Because he says, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Allow the pruning and you shall bear fruits. Allow, allow, allow. I just hear him saying, allow, allow. And so, allow him. He wants to mold you. He wants to build you. And he didn't leave you alone. He gave you another help. That is the Holy Spirit. Most of us make the biggest mistake of not listening to the Holy Spirit. He will tell you, let go. Forgive them. No, they did forgive. Forgive. How can I face them? Put a smile. Love them, bless them, pray for them. Because as much as God forgave you for your sins, He's still out for that other person. Allah. Because once people see those fruits in you, they will say, that is a child of God. They will ask themselves, what God is she serving? What God is he serving? I did this, but she forgave me. She prayed for me. Then they will come and say, I'm sorry. Sometimes you won't even hear that sorry. But allow God to prove you. That's how the enemy works. He wants to hide behind that person. He wants to behind that person. So that what? So that what? You may hate. Why? It come against what God said. The reason why the enemy is out, he does those tactics is because he's after the one that is within you. Because once you obey, the, because it says, greater is he that is within you than the one that is in the world. And so he's after the one that is within you. Why? So that you live in disobedience. And what happens? You allow him that space. then what begins to grow? Bitterness. Instead of love, bitterness begins to grow. Instead of patience, you get very irritated now. He 
He's after your relationship. The more you walk in obedience in the Holy Spirit, the more you bear fruits, the more you mature in the Spirit. And so, I want us to go to this scripture. And this is 1 John, verse 2. First John chapter 2, I mean. First John chapter 2. From verse 12, it says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. They are forgiven for his namesake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. And so in the scripture, we might be thinking that he's addressing in terms of age because he says, little children. He says fathers and he says young men. But he was addressing the spiritual state of these people because there is different states in maturity. If you want to see how God works, if you want a practical example of how God works in the spiritual realm, look at nature. A child starts at the infancy stage first. What do you feed that child? You don't instantly give them meat. You give them milk. That's how it is. The first time you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a child. Where it says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. That's the first stage. That's where you understand what he did for you on the cross. That's when you understand. You begin to understand now who are you in Christ? Who is Christ to you? The love of the Father. You begin to know your Father. Because when a child is born, they are in a place where they get to know the parents. They have that intimate relationship with the mother. And the, parent, and the father. So, don't miss the stage. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, begin to know your father. Be sheltered under his love. And understand that your sins have been forgiven. Then that's the stage you overcome. Now, after the infancy stage, we see Rumana Wahola now. They need to be given different types of food, experience different types of taste. And say so he says this, I write to you. I'll get to that one. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. Now he talks to the one who are mature in the spirit. It's like you know the one who was from the beginning. You have seen him in your life. So continue to walk in him. Because you have reached a spiritual state where you are mature. And you know him. That's when Jesus says, I liken the man who takes these words that I am saying. I liken him to a house built upon the rock. Storms may come. Everything may come. But it is not shaken. For it is founded on the rock. 
he's talking to those ones. And then he continues to say, I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. The first thing that the enemy tries to do when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior is take you back. He will remind you of the things that you did. He will tell you you are not worthy. He will condemn you. But the word of God says, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So he says, I write to you young men, those who are still maturing in the spirit, for you have overcome the wicked one. Those who are in that stage, don't allow the enemy to steal what is within you and that is the word of God that is supposed to be so rooted in you so that you may do what? Bear fruits. Then he comes to say, I write to you little children again because you have known the father. He says, finally, you have come to know the love of your father. You have come to know how good he is. You have come to know what Christ has done for you. You have come to know that all things have passed away and the new has come. I write to you because now you are maturing. And it continues to say, I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. He repeats it again, stand upon the rock. Because the storms will come, but stay. He says the same thing over again, abide in me. The trials will come, but abide in me. For you cannot do anything without me. Then he continues to say, lastly, I have written to you, young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. This is not only a challenge in young people but it's a challenge in all ages. The word of God. The word of God. This is the standard that you should live by. This should be like a mirror to you. That when you look at it, you see the reflection of Jesus. In that, when you look at it, you see the Father pruning you. He has removed bitterness. He has removed unforgiveness. He has removed anger. Now you see love patience, kindness, joy, happiness, peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't be like Mosariwa Lord. God told them to look forward. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Look forward. Allow him he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. She turned into salt that represented who we are stagnant to stand in one place. Most people they stand in one place in their spiritual growth. They are not growing. Ever since you got saved, you are in one place. Why? You are not allowing the Father to prove you. You are holding on to bitterness. You are holding on to those things that are hindering your growth. Allow Him to prove you. And so in that... Let's all close our eyes. Let's all close our eyes. I want to give this opportunity to those who are saying, 
Lord, that's me. I am the one who, is, who has been stubborn. I haven't been allowing you to prune me. I've been holding on to bitterness. I've been holding on to anger. I've been holding on to unforgiveness. But today, I ask that you forgive me. I ask, let your will be done in my life. If that's you today, raise up your hand. With all eyes closed, if that's you today, raise up your hand. Now I want you, wherever that you are right now, begin to talk to your father. Begin to repent. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to prune you now. Let's all pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you so much in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is your children in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They are here, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they are saying, Lord, forgive them. I ask that you hear them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ for bitterness to be stripped of their lives for anger to be stripped of their lives for unforgiveness to be stripped of their lives in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I ask Lord that all doors that were open to the enemy they are shut now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I cover each and every individual now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I ask Holy Spirit that you begin to work in their lives begin to work in their lives in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I thank you so much I thank you so much in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ chains are broken chains are broken in their lives strongholds strongholds are broken in the name of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With our eyes closed, continue to pray where you ever are. With our eyes closed, I would like to give this opportunity to anyone who's standing here today and saying, Lord, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come into my life. I want you, Jesus. If that's you today, please raise your hand. With all our eyes closed, those who raise their hands, can you please come forward? I want to pray with you. It's a wonderful day. It's not a mistake. The decision that you're making right now is for eternity. Okay, please raise up your hands and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I take you today as my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that you died on the cross for my sins but you rose on the third day on the third day and rose with me I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus I repent of all my sins I repent of all my sins and I take you today 
as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I surrender all to you, Jesus. I surrender all to you, Jesus. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask that you all pray. Pray in your hearts, accepting him. Pray to him. Church, let's pray with them. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you so much, Lord, for all that you have done for them. Lord, I ask that you please cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Here is your children, Lord, accepting you as your Lord and Savior. I pray that you come into their lives in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And fill them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit so that they may walk in power in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you so much in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor you, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray that they go home today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they may encounter your presence so tangible in their lives, that they know, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you are true, that you are the way, and you are life. I thank you, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season,